When you wrote the op-ed with that warning, how did you know that he would be a national security risk? Well, I think, I think part was uh, how important it is that you understand what you're protecting. Um, the other is how important it is that you understand that people will be coming after you. And, and they're, they're pretty slick. And you don't even have to conspire with them in order for them to be able to um, work magic to try and get your information. So we had a president that had access to everything, who had, in my estimation, not a really complete understanding of what he was protecting and his engagements, who he works with. You know, the fact that he has foreign businesses, knowing that he would be in situations where he could be bumped by adversaries who would want the information he had. I mean, you, you just knew that. And all you had to do was apply the need to know that is applied to any officer at any level um, to say he just didn't have the need to know. And the, and the remarkable thing about this is if the day came where the nation decided he needed to know, there would be nothing that would keep him from getting proper access to the material that he improperly has been storing. Well, th this is the question I wanted to ask you. I mean, I've talked to a former, um, someone who, who knows and worked with you, a former senior U.S. intelligence official, who said that if he were a, a normal president and he said, I need these things, can you build me a skiff and can you send down a briefer so that I can stay current on these topics, that, that may very well have been arranged for him. I mean, it, it feels like where he's maybe. in trouble and a risk to national security and maybe at risk of having committed egregious crimes, maybe even including the, uh, violating the Espionage Act, is that he lied about it. I mean, when you, I don't know if you've read this, this 40 page yeah. filing from last night, but it, it's, it's clear that every, everything did. you're talking about is, is in the national security bucket. But, but the questions only begin when you, when you read through how hard they tried and how many lawyers who may now face charges for lying to the FBI lied for him. When you try to profile the motive of that, what explanations do you come up with? Okay, so the first thing I would say, there is zero defense. I cannot imagine a defense for the situation in which we find ourselves. There's just, there's just none. There is wow. no justification. There's no excuse. That, no defense. Zero. From a national security and from a person involved. Motivation um, <laughs> is a much harder thing to ascribe, and I, I'm usually loath to, to say what I think other people are thinking. My experience is, is that the former president has uh, his agenda, and he will use whatever is at his disposal to advance that. The problem we have here is that depending on what agenda issues forth, he has had at his disposal for a long period of time information that if he used that information to advance an agenda item, it could have devastating consequence to national security. But I, I can't think of a simpler way to say why I think that this moment is so difficult and that's because there's no justification and knowing who he is and that he doesn't fully understand, but he may not decide to protect if he wanted to do something different. It's, this is a tough situation. I am, I'm glad um, that we have worked so hard to recover the information, um, but I fear that it has been in essentially the public domain for a long time. What you are describing is absolutely hair raising and, and I just wanna be sure I understand it. The New York Times has reported that he packed the boxes. So, so to your point, even if he didn't understand it, he was interested in what he was interested in. And what you're laying out is that the conduct and the recklessness with which class of some of the most 
secret classified materials. And, and you're right, not necessarily because of what they say, but because of what programs they may reveal or what methods they may reveal. Um, it may, may be in this possession. It, it sounds like it is. If his agenda is served by jeopardizing those things, he will pursue it? Yeah, I will hope, and I always hope, <laughs> that the president understands the responsibility he carries. And one of those responsibilities was the protection of national security information. So I will hope that as he conducts the rest of his life, he understands the responsibility that he had to protect that information. But I don't know that there's any reason that he should have taken it. I know there's no reason that he should have taken it. And I can't think of any reason why he should use it. But for a period of time, that opportunity existed if he forgot the responsibility he carries for the rest of his life to protect the information that he had access to. I will hope that he does. Did but you the circumstance is worrisome. Did you see him wrestle with those two things, trying to remember the office he held and trying to pursue his own agendas? Um, I don't I don't know that I ever uh, thought about it in those terms. But I think where I started when I say well, I think the intelligence community always briefed him responsibly. And what I mean by that is. He was the president of the United States, and we treated him as such. The assumption is always that the president of the United States understands his responsibility. In taking those documents out of the building is the first step of showing he didn't. What he's going to do with that information, I will hope that it kicks in again. Do you feel that what you've read in the affidavit and the filing are the first times you've seen him as a threat to U.S. national security and the intelligence community? Everyone that has access to special information and holds position is a target. Anyone who forgets that and acts outside the security rules that are set up in, in order to help them protect that presents a threat, whether it's a purposeful one or whether it's an, uh, an inadvertent one. So if you, if you forget that you're a target and you don't follow the rules, you've opened yourself and consequently us did Trump see himself as a target just simply due to the fact you just articulated because of his possession and access to our most sensitive secrets and programs? Um, again, I'm, I'm always hesitant to say how someone thinks about themselves. I, I, I believe the president thought that he was above a lot of rules because he didn't need them. But, but I also um, would never presume to know what was in someone's heart. When you read that he traveled with boxes of classified materials on foreign trips and they were carted from hotel room to hotel room, I traveled the world with Condi Rice and Steve Hadley as national security advisor <laughs> and deputy national security advisor. And I, I, I had a stroke on their behalf when I read that. I mean. There's one thing that governs how classified material is handed inside a White House, but another one when you take a foreign trip, and lots of times, and, and the technology was totally, oh, totally different, but we didn't always have our Blackberries at, at every stop. Sometimes we left them. I mean, yeah. what, in terms of what we're yeah. learning, were your daily nightmares when you worked in your old job on behalf of someone who didn't think the rules applied to him? Okay, so in his... In, in his official capacity, he had a lot of rings of professionals around him to help him execute, um, to, to help protect not only him, the information that he possessed and also the material he carried with him. So I probably worried a bit less about that. Um, now, I, I, I go back to what I said, Nicole, and there's a reason why you know you held your breath is that our adversaries, those, 
our adversaries recognize the value of not only the individual, but what the individual has, and especially physical documents. And you always worry. And they are sophisticated services with lots of ways, technical and human, to go after things. So it, I, I just think anyone who suggests that this situation of highly classified documents being out of a secure facility, relatively unprotected for a long period of time, in a known way, doesn't rep didn't and represent a significant security threat, just doesn't understand that there actually are people out there who would do us harm. And it actually doesn't even take complicity on the part of the actor in order to provide the opening for that damage. And so when I say this problem of lack of understanding is especially difficult, it's because you have to be vigilant. And I don't think that's a word that we would have ascribed to him from a security perspective. The understatement of the century there. Sue Gordon, <laughs> it is um, a true privilege um, to get to talk to you. And, and I really, I have to thank you for expanding exponentially our understanding of what's on the line for our whole country, for every one of us who benefits from the work, the quiet, um, anonymous work of the United States intelligence agencies. Thank you so much for, for speaking on, on your own behalf, but on theirs as well. I'm really grateful. Thanks, Nicole.